The question of the development of autonomous mobility in Europe has been raised for more than 10 years now. This video series aims to provide an update on driverless vehicles development all over the world. Some players in Asia and in the United States are ahead of the game as they have developed real commercial services with fully driverless vehicles. In order to get a better idea of what's going on, we wanted to meet several actors. Let's go now to the United States to see real robotaxis. Welcome to Phoenix, Arizona. We are here in Chandler to take our first fully driverless ride with the Waymo One car. As you have probably heard, Google is developing fully autonomous vehicles through its subsidiary Waymo. A first commercial service was launched in Chandler in the suburb of Phoenix in Arizona. Since the summer 2022, the service has been expanded downtown Phoenix and has now over 300 cars. The principle is very simple. You download an app, order a ride, and after a few minutes your car arrives without any driver on board. It then takes you safely to your destination. We've been sitting here for more than 10 minutes now and it's completely incredible. As you can see, there's no one behind the driving wheel. It runs very smoothly and I can tell you we are something between the present and the future. After this first amazing experience in Phoenix, we are now going to California to discover the latest technologies from Waymo and meet the people of Google. San Francisco has become the El Dorado of autonomous vehicles because the city attracts many actors involved in this development. The city is very interesting because it is quite similar to the European context with the important presence of trams and buses, but also many pedestrians and cyclists. Yeah. Hi, my name is Cedric and I'm responsible for vehicle and sensor development at Waymo. Uh, that means building the car, the sensors that are operating on the car, and the um, computer, compute layer that transforms the sensor signals into signals that are understandable by our Waymo driver. The layer on top of us, who we're producing signals for, is the planning layer. That layer then decides what trajectory the vehicle uh, will take. Autonomous vehicles are equipped with various sensors that allow them to analyze the situation, anticipate the behavior of other road users in the public space and make the right decisions for a safe and comfortable driving experience. The cameras give a simultaneous 360 degrees view around the vehicle. They see in both daylight and low light conditions and can spot traffic lights, construction zones and other seen objects even from hundreds of meters away. The LiDARs paint a three-dimension picture of the vehicle's surroundings. LiDAR sensors are located all around the vehicle in order to send millions of laser pulses in all directions. Radars use millimeter wave frequencies to provide with crucial details like an object distance and speed. Radar is effective in rain, fog and snow. So driving today is uh, not as safe as it could be. There's about 50 million injury accidents every year in the world and 1.3 million people die every year. And when you, when you look at the root cause of these accidents, in 94% of the time, the critical cause was the human factor. We built a system that was highly assistive, meaning something that you would use on the highway so you could you know, take you, your hands off the steering wheel and, and relax a little bit. Uh, but the expectation was that you stay in control of the vehicle. What we observed is that users very quickly became so comfortable with the system that they would do things like uh, putting makeup on or you know, texting uh, or even taking a nap. In, in 2013, we made the decision to switch to full autonomy, just focus on that as our objective. We have published our safety framework that explains to everyone how we assess our own safety. Um, our driver has gone through 20 million actual miles driving in, in um, uh, autonomous mode and uh, many, many more than that in simulation. So we use a mix of actual driving 
and simulation. So think of simulation as we replay the, the, the actual route and we make small changes. Waymo is not an isolated case in the United States. Many other companies such as Cruise, Zoots or Motional have also reached a high level of technological maturity. We currently observe a strong acceleration of large-scale deployments in big American cities. Hi, my name is Mark Emblard. I'm based in Palo Alto at the heart of Silicon Valley. I've been here about five and a half years now. I'm originally from France. I've been in the automotive industry for all my life. And now, just starting in San Francisco, we have two programs, both Fruz, uh, the GM subsidiary, or at least GM majority owned uh, company. Uh, we started to operate commercially without a backup uh, operator, safety operator. And we have Waymo also that's kind of a bit behind in terms of authorization, in terms of permits but that will uh, also uh, start to operate commercially without the safety operators soon as well. Cruise is another startup specializing in autonomous mobility, in which General Motors and Honda have recently invested, bringing their expertise from the automotive sector. It is developing rapidly and already operates a fleet of more than 100 robot taxis in downtown San Francisco. So my name is Jose Alvarado, I'm Manager of Government Affairs for Cruz. Primarily handle state and local affairs here in California, which is our primary market. So San Francisco is our first market. We have, uh, we're the only company to get a deployment permit from the DMV and the CPUC. So we're only the only company that can charge a fare for ride hail. So currently here in San Francisco, especially this part of the city, we can charge a fare, initial ODD but we can test in a larger ODD in San Francisco. So we have a uh, delivery service in uh, Phoenix, Arizona with a partnership with Walmart. Uh, I think we'll expand there first since we already have operations. As far as the other parts of the United States, um, it's yet to be decided, but we hope to be just about everywhere, you know, hopefully within 10 years in the United States. The roadmap for Waymo starts here in San Francisco. By deploying in San Francisco and adding that to a deployment in Arizona, we, we apply our technology to two very different uh, environments. And we, that covers the types of cities that we think we will encounter in, our, in future deployments. So there's two axes, more cities, and cities that are, have different environment, different capabilities that need to exercise. Things like uh, adverse weather that I mentioned a second. Seeing that first large-scale experiments with fully autonomous vehicles are proving successful, robotaxi developers are designing vehicles without steering wheels that can accommodate more passengers in order to reduce the number of private cars in cities. So we are building the Cruise Origin. It's our purpose-built vehicle that has no steering wheel, no brake pedal, no acceleration pedal. As you saw it inside, it can seat up to six individuals. It's fully electric and it's built here in the United States uh, in our a GM factory in Detroit and the goal is to replace our current vehicle which is the Chevy Boldy CB behind me and make it essentially manage uh, it's more space so it can access uh, or accommodate more people in one vehicle as opposed to two people in one vehicle and we're also working on a, we call it a wave variant which is an ADA accessible that allows for an electric wheelchair to be uh, users to use this vehicle as well. Today is our last day in the United States. The purpose of this trip was to look at robotaxis and the large deployment that we have here in San Francisco, some in Las Vegas and in Phoenix. To conclude this video report, I'd like to express three key messages. First, come to see it, to believe it. It's just incredible. I think people need to come to the US to see what's happening. The second thing is future is now. It doesn't look like it's coming in decades. I mean, we've experienced things that are completely safe, that work perfectly well. And the last thing is get prepared. Certainly in Europe, we really need to wake up because we don't see things coming the right way and we really need to prepare ourselves to this new revolution.